time for the visit with the personal price strangeness. Nujoni is a um, a Navajo, excuse me, a Navajo word for uh, a beauty a beauty way. That's when like a medicine man takes you on a journey. So I'm going to invite you for the next four weeks to come along on the journey that um, we took, uh, the Nijoni we took uh, starting April the 21st, 2003. And so I'm going to show you the places that we went to and the people that we talked to. These are, these are all mostly inserts today. And so I might not say too much to you in between. And so we're going to get right to uh, the first place that we went to which is Roslyn, uh, Washington. And so you'll see snow and sun, and you just see all the four seasons within a very short time. So today we're going from Washington to Montana. And as soon as we're ready with the inserts, we're going to meet up in, in Roslyn, um, at Washington, and you'll see some familiar faces there. So enjoy. Hot wire from the battery to the starter was disconnected. And the mechanic who put the starter on didn't <laughs> tighten down the nut, so it was loose. And when I got under there to follow the wire and make sure it was tight, I uh, I uh, started the starter. Oh, nice. Started going. Nice. We got it here. Yeah. Can you film this here? Yeah. Oh, Yeah. Come on, sweetie. Now, you see those things work? You see how orderly they are? Mm -hmm. What I have in the front there, that those things are attached to the front. They hear it, but it doesn't focus. You see them? Yeah, you see them? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a really good totem. The brink is where um, the show Northern Exposure, like the bar. That's what the, what she's talking about. Yeah. Go real slow. Oh, we made it. Good girl. Beauty. What time is it? What do you walk? One fifteen. We're doing well. We're doing well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Marilyn, do you know what uh, the Sam and Las Ox is? Or That's a little town, I believe. I don't know, really. Oh, there's cars behind there, but I go. Yeah. Come on. Isn't that beautiful? We got that talented woman. Very in this little town like that. Way up here. She just probably one of the greatest Vikings ever lived, you know? Maybe it's a good place for her to live. Bushan live over here, oh, no? Yeah, do you want to know where she lives? Yeah, right here, no? No. Well, you go down to this road, you turn, take a drive up, it's um, one, go one block exactly, and she's the first house on the right. On the right, yeah. Okay. I got pretty close. Are going to be in town mm -hmm. for a while? Come down and have lunch. I'd love to talk to you about the UFO hotline. We're going to. The first UFO sighting was right over in Yakima in 1946. Really? Yeah, the term, yeah, yeah. We well, we, we can take a break here. Can I, can I pull in here? Sure, of course. Okay. We have our first. I'll call her. We'll call her and tell her we're already here. We're going to go and talk. See, that's all that. Yeah. Hmm? So cool. The journey has <laughs> well, already begun, but. Okay. Let's 
Okay. Well, actually, we stopped here and uh, got invited in for lunch. They want to tell us some stories. It's the Lefty Soup Bar. And then this is downtown Boslin. I'm a woman. He sure fixed that up nice. And then over here it says Northwest Mining Company. Yep. And then here you see PRV. In English, it is called Judy Walk. It's like a journey. And I can't pronounce it in Navajo yet, but I will before this, so it's over. And then here, this is in, in the cafe. The lefty. Beautiful painting here. I'll show that to you. That's the thing I l we like about little towns. They are so creative. Look at that beautiful portrait up here. It is just gorgeous. The lady just declining on top of the counter. And then if you come down here a little bit, here's the food. Oh, I met the lady named Bethany once. I thought that was kind of pretty. Yeah. And who's the little blonde lady behind you there? Uh, that's our girl. She can be whoever she wants to be. How cool, yeah. She usually sits outside. Yeah. And this place is actually two blocks from Kanashiba Town. Yes. Huh? We did a whole story on your little town here about three years ago. Really? It was, yeah, and it was uh, nominated for an award. Yeah, but I did her. This paper is uh, in the window of the cafe, and it says, Joy Freeze, two white men in wolf whistle slaying case, and it is dated, it is dated September 24th, 1955. And then over here, it talks about the three three scientists uh, winning a, a Nobel Prize. And it's five cents. And this is from October 30, 1958. Now, this is actually the table top. I'm on special effects here. I didn't want to be there. I'm sorry. All three are here. Looking into the sun. Yeah. Now, you said your name was? Bethany. Bethany. Mm -hmm. How beautiful. Thank and you. You said you lived here all your life? Yes. And you were born? I was born in the hospital, but my first house was right up on 5th Street. Okay, I'm just going to make a little turn here while you're telling us about... Okay. We were talking about, uh, we're trying to sort out what's terror and what's normal. Right. And then you said that... This entire place is paranormal, and for us it's normal, totally. Uh, there's uh, lots of buildings around here that have what they call ghosts, and there's uh, a lot of um, 
UFO activity or sightings, especially between here and Yakima. One of the first UFO sightings was in Yakima. It's really famous in 1946. It's actually something that um, I had dreams about when I was little. The Did same you? kind of sightings, I would have the same nightmares, and several other people that grew up in the same area have the same dreams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are aware that you probably have some of the best psychics in the country living here. Oh, Kabashibashan? No kidding. <laughs> I can yeah. feel her coming down her, the street before she even comes down the street. Her and I do the predictions for the, for the country, for America, once a year. Wow. Uh, on television, and we are, un unfortunately, we're always 94% accurate. Yeah. Because sometimes uh, we could change things if we so too. Yes. But they don't want to. Right. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Yes, well, you will. We have a great respect for Kabashibashan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on here you wouldn't believe it yeah. just she you can tell by looking at her how uh, amazing she is and her mm -hmm. power something to be very respected yeah she's a beautiful person yes and you only were two two blocks away from the house right yeah. yes and so how long have you had the cafe this um it's been lefties for two years mm -hmm. before that it was the brookside deli and i believe that it was the deli for seven years mm -hmm. and before that it was another type of deli mm -hmm. I think it's been in the restaurant business for probably the last 30 years. Yes. I was in town maybe five years ago the last time, and I don't remember seeing them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so you say everybody has experiences here? Especially the younger people. Mm -hmm. I notice people my age, 30 mm -hmm. and younger, have a lot more awareness about, um, like, energies. Mm -hmm. You know what some people might just feel bad energy but i think people that have lived here for a long time realize that it's actually energies coming from a different um maybe a different plane of existence and not something to be afraid of i don't have any fear of it since you, i've you mentioned the vortex so yeah I'm swing around here. on the hillside on up the hillside here? that she's talking about yeah there is a vortex up there um i had a friend that grew up on the hillside in sky meadows which is up and a little to the left of that hillside where you can't really see it. But um, her father was abducted by UFOs from the time she was about five all the way up through high school. I used to stay at her house. Um, and I had the experience of seeing a beam of light descending down the stairs into her father's bedroom mm. one time. And I'm not sure if it was a dream or if it was real. But the area that they talk about that their house is in, it's amazing, the energy there. Mm -hmm. My horse would always have her ears flat back against her head when we ride through there. She didn't, she didn't feel at ease there. Mm -hmm. It was really amazing. Definitely worth checking out, I think. Well, well, like I told you, we had done a whole historic story on mm -hmm. that. We know there was some, in the olden days, there was a lot of ugliness. Mm, and yes. so maybe it's just trying to balance it out with the young people. Right. You know? Yeah, there this was. would be really wonderful. There's horrible things that happened in this town before yeah. the turn of the century. Yeah. There was mass murders of yeah. the immigrant Chinese. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of murders of Indians before mm -hmm. that in the Ellensburg and Yakima area. A lot of horrible things happened. Yeah. But we're trying to change the energy of the world, and you think we're getting anywhere with that? I think it takes, I think it takes a lot of people feeling the same thoughts and putting their energy towards the same thing. And I don't know, I, I hope, because I would love for everybody to have a mass consciousness to stop the war mm -hmm. and to stop the ugliness. Um, I wish I had more faith because there is a lot of ugliness. So, um, is the elevation is how, how high are you here? Um, I'm not sure, 2,500 feet, 3,000 feet. And how many people live here now? In this town, it's a right around a thousand, a thousand year round. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, back in the 70s, it was right around 400. Mm -hmm. So you can see it's yeah. grown. Now with the resort, it'll be a thousand, a thousand, thousand plus. A thousand yeah, more. yeah. I'm familiar with your water rights. And, yes, all and, of that. Yeah, and it's uh, and it, I don't know if you know or not, but Kanashibasan is very uh, active in some of your mm -hmm. uh, your local issues. Yes, you know. she is. Yeah, she's she's what she can. Yeah, mm -hmm. amazing. She does what she can. Yeah. Now we went ahead, we went and interviewed uh, security leaders uh -huh. of different countries, China and Russia and Turkey and places, and they all wanted to talk about the war too. But it's so wonderful to be able to send them a tape 
from a little town. Yes, so I understand how the, that. How the Irish person feels. Yes. Yeah, it would be nice. We don't want the war. There's only a few people in every town that are so pro-war. It is, it is um, born of ignorance, is what I believe, because war doesn't solve anything. Yeah. Well, and what time do you open? We open at 9 o'clock during the week and 8 o'clock on the weekends. Okay. You know, because we might stay the night. We don't know yet. Oh, and wonderful. If we do, we'll have breakfast with you. Great. I'll make your breakfast then. Cool. I'm the breakfast cook. Cool. And so for right now, I'm going to tell you thank you. We might come back down later, but okay. um, I think kind of she was on brain a little overdue. Right. Oh, I thank you. you. So wonderful. Thank and you. here again, I'm going to give you, oh, we have added a friend here. Oh. Somebody's friend. Yeah. Uh, it's just a beautiful place. That's just a neighbor dog. Uh-huh. Hey, okay, so thank you. Thank you. Back from at the cafe. It says, they first came for the communists, and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a communist. Then they came for the Jews, and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a Jew. <coughs> then they came for the trade unionists, and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a trade unionist. They came for the Catholics, and I didn't speak up because I was a Protestant. And then they came for me. By that time, no one... By that time, no one was left to speak up. Pastor Martin Neumiller, Nazi victim. There's a cold sign. Please leave this planet as you wish to find it. This is the inside of the toilet bowl. It is so cool. So much for the bathroom. And then there is like a little store here in the back with herbs and Soap stands. Just a cool place. Natural soap, handmade. And then this way you walk back down into the restaurant. For Sean and Caitlin, a writing company. That concludes my tour. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. It's been a trying day. We still in Walsh now. We've talked to about Kanashi Bashan for quite a while. And so, of course, it's natural for the next person that we get to um, is her house. And then she's going to tell us um, a, a story about this, this lock that she owns. And um, so here's Kanashi Bashan with her story. Kanashi Bashan's front yard. And here we have Mr. Lion. And there's Mr. Panther. So windy. Isn't he gorgeous? And here's some painting. Pictures, I guess. It's so windy. I've got to figure out now six from nineteen ninety seven. March. I think near the 20th of March, I went to Texas. And I went to Texas to see a second cousin named Jeff Guest. And I think he was 91 or 2 at the time. And um, we stayed a couple of days. I went with my sister Ethel and my sister Lynn Lee, who just had a stroke. And um, uh, we went down to see our relatives, because we hadn't seen him in about 45 years. I hadn't seen him since 1950. D4. And so I got a chance to go on. So I really want to see Jeff because he was really a sweetheart. I really, really, really liked him. In fact, my liked him too, even though they're relatives. She, they had thought about marriage at one time. Okay, that's on the QT. But they didn't. But anyway, I was getting ready to leave and I really didn't want to leave him because I felt like I'd never see him again. And I just wanted something that belonged to him. So I said, Jeff, I said, I, I, I want, would you give me something that belonged to you? Could I have a cup, a glass, a piece of your hair? I know I'm not going to get your shoes that you bought, those old shoes that cost $300 40 years ago. I know I ain't getting those, so I'm not asking. But something I'd love to have, because, you know, I don't think I'll see you again. And so he went into his bedroom where he kept everything that belonged to him. And he came out, 
And he said, close your eyes. I closed my eyes. And then he said, open them. And when I opened them, he was crying. When I saw those tears and I looked down and saw this uh, lock and key, I guess it's true. <laughs> um, I said, well, where did you get this, Jeff? And he says, it came my grandfather gave it to me. Now, he was 92 years old, this man, or 91 at the time. And so his grandfather means that this lock came out of slavery. He said it came out of slavery with my grandfather. Mm -hmm. And he started okay. crying. Can you just hold it up? Yeah. Nope. Let's see if I can lock it. Let me see if I can lock it so I can hold it. Well, I can't. I'll have to hold it this way. Yeah, it's reacting to the light of something. But no, no, thing. no. Leave it where okay. you have it. Okay. By the way, this is Kana Shiva san I didn't introduce her because you know who that is. <laughs> anyway, and the light is reacting. Um, oh, because that light coming in that window. Well, maybe it's not the light. Maybe it's just. It's probably the light coming in the window. Maybe it's just the lock. Mm -hmm. Tilt it. So this way? This no, way. no, leave it alone. Oh, sure. Thank you. We'll just leave it the way it is. I'm going to take an order. Thanks. <laughs> no, thanks. Okay, back to the story. So, hey, thanks. And so he gave it to me, and, um, uh, and he told me to, uh, you know, wait before I show it to people. Mm -hmm. And I did. And he died about a year later. Mm -hmm. I never did get to see him again. And his brother... Uh, was about a year younger than him or two, I think, and he died right before he did. Mm -hmm. In fact, about five people died that year, <laughs> my relatives down in the South. But I never got to see him again, but I know that this, no, and I was trying to check it and find out whether, you know, where the lock uh, might have came from in slavery, what mm -hmm. it was used for. But I, I really believe it was used to lock humans yeah. with the chains, because when I was checking my TV, uh, tapes that I took of Roots, mm -hmm. I saw when they brought this young man in, he had a lock on his, uh, with the chains that looked the exactly thing, yeah. like mm -hmm. this. And I'd went to the art museum in uh, Seattle, mm -hmm. and I'd went to the University of Washington, and they couldn't, they had nothing like this, they had something similar, mm -hmm. but they didn't have anything like this, so, but I did recognize it was quite old, and, and most of them, like you said, were made in Europe. Mm -hmm. And made by hand. Yeah, that when uh, you had told me the story a long time ago, mm -hmm. and then I forgot. So when I picked it, I thought it picked it up. I thought it came from Prussia, and then then I realized it was the one you had told me about. Mm -hmm. But that's the first thing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we got any viewers from Prussia out there, I'd like to hear from. And you. I don't know if uh, I I know that my great grandmother came out of South Carolina. And I know that the master, her master name was Craven, and I think that's mm -hmm. where it's connected with. And they came out of England. Um, what happened was they were given land from their daddy, and there was two brothers, I think, three brothers, and he stayed in South Carolina. Two of them went north. Mm -hmm. And my great-grandmother's name was Mary Jane Craven, which was the master's name, and then she married a man called Warsh or Washington, but what happened was, that's the story too, and I think it's still connected because it's all about Craven, you understand? Mm -hmm. um, his name was Jeff something else, it wasn't Craven, but they're all related. Uh, but what happened was my great-grandmother and my great-grandfather started liking each other, and they lived on uh, plantations that were hooked to each other. Mm -hmm. And so evidently they weren't doing enough work. Mm -hmm. So, uh, my great-grandmother's master, which happened to be her daddy, uh, went and bought Mr. Washington, and he became a craven, mm -hmm. so they could be on the same plantation and, and get some get work, the work done. get some work done. So, uh, yeah. but she lived, they say she lived to be 126. Mm -hmm. And uh, some say she had 26 children, some said she had 35. Yeah, we talked about that. But she brought 10 out of slavery. Yeah. Yeah. And those were my uh, grandparents, yeah. my grandfather and his brothers and sisters. Yeah, cool. You know, I'm going to do another close-up with this. Uh, let's just write your hand. You want it yeah. down with this? Uh, no, no, I want the red gone. Thank you. Okay. We want the red gone. It is just so incredible. And it's cut really clear with the red yeah. gone? And I really, really think it meant that I could still alive. Really? Wait till you see it. I'm not doing nothing. And thank you for sharing it. Oh, well, I'd love to share it. I oh, think it's quite a story. Quite a story. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
I mean, oh my goodness. Yeah. It's really see that stone. And not only that, I forgot. But oh, I'll leave it. In my, in here, it's I think doing it's something. in here. It's doing something. It is. Uh, What's yeah. it doing? Well, I, we're going to have to put it on TV. We, uh, we went to Ellensburg on a straight line on I-90. Somewhere along the line, we got turned around. Now, this is after we left Karnasheba Shams. And we found ourselves... Right we found ourselves in somewhere totally different heading for Yakima. So, we got lost. Uh, yeah. It's right outside of Ellensburg. rolling hills. Then came the first lava flow. Long cracks or vents opened in the earth and lava flooded the land, spreading like water. The lava cooled and solidified into the rock. Lakes, swamps, and streams reformed on a new, relatively flat surface. Then lava again flooded the land. The time between lava flows was sometimes only months, sometimes hundreds, even thousands of years. Each eruption reset the clock in a cycle that continued for 15 to 20 million years. The layer of basalt visible in the valley, valley walls are part of the, one of the largest lava fields in the world. It covers over 200,000 square miles in Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, and is reported to be over 10,000 feet thick in places. This monument, monument was dedicated to Professor George Beck, who for many years taught geology at Central Washington University in Ellensburg. Thank you. That's close. All right, coming up on the. 
some of the waste from the Hanford plant will leak into the Columbia River. And that Columbia River cuts straight through Washington. And Oregon. And Oregon. You're looking at the bridge crossing the Columbia, Columbia River. Coming from Hanford Nuclear Plant, heading towards Othello, Washington. Here's a nice view of the Columbia River where it cuts through the valley outside the Vernita Rest Area. What they did is partially here. Okay, we've got some kind of orchards here, probably pear. It's pretty fun. Yeah, real beautiful orchards stretch on for miles. It's a combination of orchards and farmland. So here you can see some kind of grain crop. Here we've got bee boxes along the side of the road right on the edge of the orchard for pollination purposes. They have um, around they have around 220,000 bees in each of these bee boxes. Each of the Look at the whole boxes. stack. Is that a whole stack there? Oh, those are the bees. I just want to get a small bit of one. It's great how they use these huge trees as not only property breaks, Came out of Ritzville. The, uh, a half a mile. Oh, we did a whole half a mile. Yeah, the RV started backfiring, so we pulled off the highway. And it overheated. We're on our way to Sprague, and, and we've now, got these mounds. Look what we ran into. Perfect. Like Lillian said, you can't see this kind of stuff on the highway. No. Uh -huh. Probably going east. Woo! <laughs> Plenty of moo cows. We're going east. It looks like a like a moonscape, you know? Yeah. Oh wow. And do we go where now? We go? We ended up at the Purple Sage Motel. Um, we're not staying, but I'm gonna drive to town real slow here. One car in the whole town is just beautiful. Purple Sage should be a good sign here. Yeah. I'm gonna find us a cafe. Look how pretty. Swing over what you have here. Swing over here. How pretty. East Street. That's the whole little town right here. The post office. We're gonna find a little cafe or something to eat. And that's the whole town of it's a house that's still on the wall. It's huge. Well, okay. That's it. Oh, we ended up in, what's the town we have? Oh, you're in Sprague, Washington. It's Sprague, Washington. Your name is Nora. And the lady, the lady is coming by here now. Tell us where you're from. <laughs> I'm from the west side of the mountains. Which town? The last town I lived in was Lacey. Lacey. Uh, that's my case. Um, and, and you have been here, you, you've lived I've here? I've been here for about 15 years. Mm -hmm, 15 years. And you? you? I've been here about eight years. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. is a great cafe. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. It is. We got off the highway rather strange, and we needed our generator looked at. And so while we had lunch, the first person we talked to was the generator repairman. <laughs> Oh, the repairman, Bill. Bill, yeah. yeah. Very nice man. You, you said something that we came at a good time? 
I said you came at a very exciting time because mm -hmm. fishing season is opening here, the spring fishing mm -hmm. season. And we have campers and fishermen mm -hmm. from all over the state, in many states as a matter of fact. They come over from Seattle and mm -hmm. the Tri-Cities and Oregon, Idaho, all around to fish here. Well, at least it's not hunting, so when we drive the back road, we... Yeah, and if you come in the fall, be hunting, then we'll you'll see all the hunters here. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> the other thing I want... You see now? Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and you say you, have, you make a, a big dinner? Yeah, yeah, every Friday night I make a big dinner. Tonight we're having beef stroganoff, mm -hmm. if you're a man. And the name of your place is? It's Nora's Hungry House Cafe. And it is the Hungry House Cafe. Thank you. We're getting real busy, so thank you for oh. have, doing this interview for us. Thank, thank you. Thank you mm -hmm. very much. And then out of the window here is Bill. Nice. Working on the generator. And we're going to stay in the back lots a little longer. There we are, outside of Spokane, on a back road. Heading towards the town of Marshall. We just came out of Four Lake. close to the border of Idaho here. We were sitting here trying to figure out the name of the movie. Something wicked this way comes. Had to make a decision what to do here. And so I got a little guidance and um, there's a kitty. Where we parked is right next to a carnival. And it's actually the Titanic. Pretty awesome, actually. We had a good day today. Beautiful. Um. Well, it was. It seemed to um. A lap, like a lapse, really fast. Like it doesn't. It didn't really have like a uh, a focal point it was just a lot of like small happenings that didn't seem to take very long but ended up it's like eight right now and it, it feels as though it should be like three, at three. Mm -hmm. and um i think that probably my favorite point was um we went to this wonderful cafe called uh nora's um hungry house and um, in uh, what town is that? Syracuse. In in um. Sprague. Oh, oh. Sprague. Uh, Sprague. Yeah. And um, we ate there, and it was like just it was just great. Like the the uh, waitress is really nice, and the food is really good. And um, the, when I was walking out after eating, um, Sean was working on the generator and stuff with this really nice guy that came. Great eyes. And this couple was coming up. They were like probably in their 70s or so, and they were they stopped at the cafe, and everyone had just left that was supposed to be eating there, that had just eaten there, and so the cafe was empty. And they stopped, and they were like looking in and talking to each other, and they decided that they didn't want to eat there, and they were um, turning around to drive off. And I like walked up to them, and I was like, No, you guys need to stop here. This is a great restaurant. Everyone just left, um, and so they turned around and went in. And I just like that seems really simple, but it was like maybe some sort of like allegiance to the restaurant like after being there and just like just they could have eaten it like anywhere you know anywhere else a mm -hmm. big restaurant but instead they went there and i just i thought it was like my good deed for the community or something i don't know it was pretty cool well my my favorite today was when we were sitting and the woman came along do you remember the story about Oh, yeah, um, we were sitting in the parking lot at, um, in, in, yeah, in Cheney, 
um, at the parking lot of Ben Franklin, and um, we were just chilling out. He was working on this BB, and um, this lady walked up and she was like, "May I ask you guys a question?" And she's like, "Where did you get that the little lighthouse in the front of the um, RV?" Which is, of course, you probably know the story about how Lillian bought this lighthouse at a shell station and um, she came home, put it in the RV and as she was like sticking it down, she noticed that there was like an angel with a trumpet up in the top of the lighthouse where the light would, should be and it kind of freaked her out, freaked us all out. And so, <laughs> but it has a water wheel on the side of it, mm -hmm. which has seemed pretty insignificant to mm -hmm. I think all of us. And um, well anyway, this lady was like, the water wheel, the water wheel, like, you know, she was really, she just wanted to know where, where we got it because of that and it turned out that her um, father had promised that he would build her a water wheel and um, had died before he built it and it kind of I think triggered some memories for her um, of her father which I think was like mm -hmm. a good thing and mm -hmm. um, anyway we told you know Lillian told her where she got it and everything and the lady walked away and then when she was coming out of uh, Lillian and I talked about like how she pretty much she just build build a, a water wheel for herself and kind of maybe a memory of her father mm -hmm. and um she was walking out of ben franklin and we jumped out of the car and mm -hmm. uh told her this and she was like yeah that's yeah it's a good idea it's true and then lillian mentioned that like i was an architect maybe i had some good ideas on what to build with it and i was thinking you know something like i didn't really think that she wanted a full water wheel you mm -hmm. know i was like oh well she could do one out of like grapevines or something and have it in her mm -hmm. house and she was like, you know, I was, you know, the farm equipment that like, is like a spoke and you could bend it. And it was just so cool because she had already like thought about it and had her own ideas. And it was mm -hmm. like, we just like facilitated her in, in like remembering and like thinking, you know, and she can do it on her own now. And it was, um, it was That's really cool. cool. It's cool. Mm -hmm. And so we gave her a card. We did, yeah. of course. <laughs> okay, hang on. What was your part today, John? You have to talk loud. Well, <clears throat> my part was hooking up a few of the wiring things, like the CB. And I hooked up the CB, we got power, but we don't have any reception, so. Yeah, I wonder if you had a, a really interesting phone call. Yeah, I got in touch with my uh, good friend Steven from Texas. And uh, he told you about a UFO. Mm-hmm, sure did. Uh, I don't remember what it, something about it. Mm -hmm. Being all funny looking. Well, basically, what he said, he said he was a very compartmentalized person. And him and about 50, 50 other people saw this object that it sh kept shifting shapes. Uh, you know, shapes and not really colors, but what he didn't know was um, he couldn't put in the category as imaginary, as real, as square, as round. And so we, uh, we explained to him that. He probably they probably saw it as it was either cloaking or decloaking. And as the conversation went on, it turned out that they did call the UFO hotline about it. So it was a long time ago. He didn't remember who he talked to. Mm -hmm. it, he told me another story from about that time. You have to speak loud. It was, it was while, while he was viewing that UFO, he was out in the front yard. He was going to the Art Institute at the time, and somebody had put out a, uh, a sculpture and it was of two large columns about the same top about the same size and they had holes in them and this was before 9-11 but these two columns had holes in them at exactly the same spots that the planes hit the buildings oh my so there's a precognition mm -hmm. in the collective conscious mm -hmm. of what happens and that right there is a good instance of when it comes out not to mention all the different CD covers and stuff, you know. Yeah, there were plenty yeah, of CD all covers those, that yeah. depicted the uh, incident that yeah. came out that day. And I know a good many people that... Uh, uh, just maybe, maybe you need to sit over here so we can hear you. In case you're wondering, um, Sean is hanging up on by the ceiling there, playing his guitar. Okay, sit down so we can hear hanging you. Hanging from my tail like a monkey. Yeah, do, do the monkey. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> okay, no. And um, I, just my uh, myself, have known a, a good many people that um, 
had dreams about about the like 9/11 thing happening and and just you know out of nowhere they're not they weren't even uh, expecting to or whatever, you know whatever and didn't really talk about it until afterwards and I'm like this is kind of nuts but I kind of you know I dreamed about this earlier mm -hmm. and stuff so I don't know yeah I had a dream the uh, the morning before it all happened uh, of a landscape on fire and uh, everything in total destruction everything and it was all charred and it was just all fire it was that morning I didn't know anything in the class we saw swans that's all so anyway this tape is at the end so we're gonna have a nice evening and we are really gonna get somewhere aren't we true 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 okay <laughs> cool we stop i'm gonna end it with the carnival and here you have the carnival in the dark And today we are in Washington, in Idaho, and we're getting ready to go to Montana. And over a series of weeks, we will take you all the way. The young lady is the camera person, Catlin, and Sean Yanke that uh, did all my filming for me. So we are on to Montana now. And then um, we just continue over the next few weeks. So we're going to take you there, however far we're going to get today. And um, then next week, we will continue. So if we ready for the next um, clip, and uh, just it's come right along. Very difficult to yeah. Nice man to talk to them before. It has been bad, right? Where's the hotel? Did, how many, I wonder how many people live here. If any, I don't think there's any. There's a restaurant, right? And he said there's a bar. A bar? In that Yeah. Well, there's no people living here. What did he farm for? I think there's a few people living here. They got a hotel. There's an antique shop up here on the left, too. Oh, really? No, we'll go there. No, definitely. Well, look at this. Oh. Huh? Junkyard, almost. Auto sales, huh? I bet you property is cheap here. Huh? Huh? Yep. There's a dog. Don't turn us off. Oh, this is great. Huh? Up here at the uh, antique shop. Texas side yard sale. Yeah, Texas size yard sale. And it says no turnabout beyond this point. There's nobody here. Look at there. Not one person. The bar's open, is it? I don't know. Huh? Here we are at the Montana Bar in Salty's, Montana. What's up? It's a schedule stop. We were just going to be here last night. And uh, then the blinkers failed. And so we stopped here today and talked to this nice man. We're going to interview him in a minute. Look what we got here. He is so beautiful. Wow. Boy, isn't that awesome? This is part of the history of the town here. It's hanging on the wall. This is the saloon. And if we go over here, April 19, 1910, must be all the town people. I'll bring those in for you. There we go. A lot of gold, so I can see a lot of snow. We're going to be talking to the owner of this establishment here. In a minute, we saw a Pavo sign. We saw a bus Pavo sign. Now, up here, the car is all flooded. 
And we are in Saltis, Montana. So beautiful. Certificates and treasury notes. You turn of the century. 1899 on the silver dollars. Yeah, Lincoln's and Grant's pictures on. One dollar note. Two dollar note. Washington's face on. It's a mining town, had about 6,000 people at its height. So I hope you have enjoyed this, this trip that we took you on uh, and hope you come along next week when we continue in to enjoy the places that we went and the people that we talked to. Now, uh, we hit snow right about there and so because the weather on this tape was very cold, I thought I would close today with one of our neighbor dogs that decided to have some fun in the sun here just the other day. and. Um, and so on the way out, we're going to just show you the 
the little dog catching the bubbles. And um, it was really nice to come back to a warm climate. And uh, we, had a, we had a wonder, we just had a wonderful trip. And so I hope to see you next week um, for another uh, journey, Nujona, now that I know how to pronounce it, um, in the RV that we took this summer. And, uh, so I'm not sure, but I think I'm sure. it's almost up. So you come and see me next week, okay? It's a little bit